everyone welcome back to the channel guys we are out here at the horsepower factory and we have the 17 gt that we installed comp stage two cams boundary oil pump gears a new ford housing for the oil pump we put in on stainless works catted long tubes a gt350 intake manifold with gt350 throttle body and a jdl t code air kit and of course we got winger performance up in there tuning the car and then we're out here at the horsepower factory on the dyno to see what this car will put down and to finalize the tuning and get it ready to go back to the customer so leave your comments below don't cheat what do you think it will make on this dyno all right guys here we go first pull What's the verdict? More timing? More cam? No more timing, but I do a little test on some, uh, some variable cam timing on the next run. Okay, adjust uh, the cams a little bit. timing is good. We're not going to mess much with timing. So. so just mess with the cam timing and see what it'll do. Yep. Alright guys, not bad first run, 456. Alright guys, made a little tune adjustment and now we're going to run it on the dyno one more time. example this is the prime example why i talk about with coyote guys if you look right here at the peak torque we're at 44 444 horsepower with 380 foot pounds of torque they're close yeah. it's 61 40. if we would have stopped the pull right there everybody would be like oh it makes great torque but see we keep going and the torque is done but the horsepower keeps bad. going so that guys that's why you always see a lot higher numbers of horsepower on torque on a coyote if we was to stop here where most engines that you claim make great torque it'd be the same but we carry it on out very i'm impressed like this has impressed me two, these are two the two separate ones so look at your your cam time and adjusting what it did there man we picked up a lot there man we picked up four power Actually, and torque you what all you can do is just by adjusting your variable cam timing yeah uh, so when you lock out variable cam timing i don't really care to lock that stuff out yeah but i mean uh, some cars the big horsepower you're having issues with it with like really high rpms it's not uh holding the desired uh angles it's supposed to be at outside of that i see no reason to lock them out i wouldn't do it unless i was making stupid horsepower uh, not at all all right guys so uh yeah there we go 50 in both places 346 yeah. that's the first run yeah that's the first run 
Second run, 382, 494. 40 there, 50, no, 40 and 40. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just playing with the cam timing. What you get when you get a good tuner. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back at the shop. We did not want to do another dyno pull. We talked about it. We could have let it cool down, and if we'd have had the same ITs we had that first run, it'd have probably been over 500. Yeah, on the first one, uh, uh, if we did uh, put the cam timing in on the first run and the timing we had, I'd say 505, 506 for horsepower yeah. at least. Because the second run, we had high IETs, less actual timing advance, but we had different uh, the new cam timing I used, and uh, it made, you know, 40, Close to 40 more horsepower. Yep. Or a little, actually a little more than 40, like 45. Yep. Yep. The first run would have definitely been a 500 wheel horsepower car. And you feel it on the street to it. It may be, <laughs> the torque down low actually feels pretty similar to stock on that run that we did. And uh, it goes up, it just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling. Yeah. Uh, but I'm impressed for uh, for the cams, just the stage two cams. But guys, we use dynos as tuning tools. That's the prime purpose that we use the dynos for. So once we get the tune dialed in, we know everything looks great. Unless the customer tells us to let it cool down and go after a glory run on the dyno, we usually stop it, that's good enough. And plus, I mean, in all actuality, most time we're driving these cars, they're already heated up too, so I mean, yeah. that's- yeah. We could have kept on number chasing, but the tune is good, everything checked out. We could have kept doing pulls to break the 500, but usually when my job's done tuning, we don't put any more wear on the cars than we need to. That's so once it's checked out, I'm, my job done. Yeah, that's the same way I am. I mean, once, once I'm done installing and I start it up, Put it on the dyno, everything runs great. I bring it back to the shop. I put it on the lift. I check for any fluid leaks, anything like that. And then if it's good to go, I turn it to the customer and uh, they can beat the crap out of it all they want to. But anyway, guys, a uh, huge shout out to Daryl for coming out and get this tune knocked out. As always, guys, go check him out, Winger Performance. All the information down in the description. Also, guys, don't forget if you're in the West Tennessee area, go holler at Horsepower Factory for all your dyno needs. And if you need some LS, LT, or Chevy work, Go holler at Alan. He is your guy to talk to. If you want forward work, holler at me here at HPR. All the information down in the description. But guys, we're going to get out of here. One so more thing. You can't forget, uh, most of you know I'm not doing installs anymore. All the cars, if you contact me for installs, I'm going to send you straight to Ken from HPR. So skip me on the install. Just go straight to Ken. So. There you go, guys. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we'll see you next time.